A lot of details about the movie changed during the pre-production phase, and even still during production and post-production. The script was originally supposed to center around The Matrix, but because the studio wanted to avoid association with the Matrix movie trilogy, it had to be renamed. For the longest time, the working name was Energon Cube, which neither the fans nor producer Don Murphy were really happy with. Ultimately, it was renamed into the All Spark for the final movie. However, the name Energon Cube is still used in Alan Dean Foster's novelization of the movie, and was also used by Shia LaBeouf in a CBS interview immediately before the movie's official theatrical launch. One of the Autobot characters in the early Kurtzman ORCI drafts was RC, who would have turned into a motorcycle. Even though Hasbro developed a toy based on the designs for the character, RC was dropped from the script and replaced with Ironhide. Kurtzman and ORCI didn't want to spend time explaining the purpose of female Autobots, and Michael Bay considered her too small as compared to the rest of the Autobots. Despite what fans commonly assume, however, the scene during the final battle in Mission City where Lennox uses an abandoned motorcycle for his assault on Blackout wasn't added to the script until after RC had already been dropped from the script. However, had she not been dropped, she would have been that motorcycle. Other Autobot characters considered by ORCI and Kurtzman were Hot Rod, Wheeljack and Prowl. The last was eventually dropped because ORCI and Kurtzman preferred the idea of a Decepticon in disguise as a police vehicle. Kurtzman and ORCI tried twice to include Soundwave in the movie. The first attempt was supposed to turn into a helicopter, but Hasbro rejected that notion and insisted that Soundwave's alternate mode should have something to do with music. The character was then renamed multiple times, among those names being Grimlock, Vortex, Devastator, and Incinerator. The character eventually ended up as Blackout. The second attempt would have infiltrated the CIA headquarters in the form of a portable stereo, and then transformed, and size shifted, into a Humvee for his escape and track down Sam. However, Kurtzman and ORCI eventually decided that the character didn't really do Soundwave justice, so they decided to change his name and save Soundwave for the sequel. The character went through some other working names such as Boombot and Soundbite, and eventually ended up as Frenzy. In addition, for the vehicle part, a separate character was created who eventually ended up as Barricade. Other Decepticon characters considered by ORCI and Kurtzman, aside from Soundwave, were Shockwave and Ravage. The latter was originally supposed to be a minion of helicopter Soundwave who would have chased Lennox and his crew through the jungle after the attack on their base. However, when the scene was changed from the jungle to the desert, and Soundwave was no longer Soundwave, Ravage was replaced by Scorponic. Because of the long production run of the toys, Hasbro urged Michael Bay very early on to decide upon the Transformers characters to be used in the movie and their vehicle forms, even though the script wasn't completed yet by that point. As a result, Many of the Decepticon characters in particular were chosen somewhat hastily, and aren't really based on established Transformers characters aside from their names. The tank used for Brawl, aka Devastator, was a recycled prop originally built for the movie XXX, State of the Union, while the mine-protected vehicle used for Bonecrusher caught the filmmaker's attention because of a giant photoshopped fork depicted on the manufacturer's website. Other Decepticon characters featured in an early draft, aside from Grimlock, Helicopter, and Soundwave, Portable Stereo, Humvee, were Brawl as a Jeep, Frenzy as a Piranha 3 mortar artillery vehicle, Onslaught as a mobile missile launcher, Octane as a tanker truck, and three jets named Blitzwing, Starscream and Devastator, a cargo plane, a 747 jet and F-16 fighter. The script doesn't say which is which. Instead of having been hiding on Earth for a while, they would have arrived there during the movie after having been summoned by Soundwave. It's possible that the Piranha 3 later evolved into Striker, Wreckage. The evil police car Decepticon that replaced Prowl took over the vehicle portion of the second character originally conceived as Soundwave, which eventually became Frenzy. His vehicle form was originally supposed to be a Ford Crown Victoria, 
while his working name was Brawl. Eventually the character ended up as Barricade, with the vehicle mode being changed into a Celine S281 Extreme Mustang, because Ford didn't want one of their cars used as a villain. Therefore, Barricade sports no Ford logos in the movie. Another Decepticon character intended to be in the movie had the working name, Striker, named after his vehicle mode, AM1126 Striker Infantry Carrier Vehicle. It's possible that he had evolved from a character named, Frenzy, featured in an early script draft, who would have turned into a Piranha 3. The character ultimately never made it into the movie, but Hasbro later turned the design into a toy regardless, named Wreckage. Michael Bay also considered having a Transformers character turn into an aircraft carrier, but eventually scrapped that idea for cost reasons. ORCI and Kurtzman included the character in one of their drafts of the script, and artist Tim Flattery created concept art. Working names for the tank Decepticon were Demolisher and Devastator, the latter of which had also been a working name for Blackout at one point. Even though Michael Bay confirmed in May 2006 that this was not the final name, screenwriters Roberto Orci and Alex Kurtzman confirmed the final name to be Brawl in April 2006, and Hasbro used that name for all their toys based on the movie character. He identifies himself as Devastator in a subtitle in the movie itself. According to a fan who attended the Australian press conference, Bay had decided to use that name regardless. While Hasbro considered the name in the movie a continuity error, and ORCI even claimed that he and Kurtzman had pointed out said error in the editing room twice. Michael Bay decided to have Bumblebee not turn into a Volkswagen Beetle because he wanted to avoid similarities with Disney's Herbie, the love bug. Production designer Jeff Mann originally suggested using a Dodge Super B as Bumblebee's alternate mode but eventually Bay signed a deal with General Motors that saved him $3 million of his budget, which is why Bumblebee turns into a Chevrolet Camaro in the movie. Ratchet was originally intended to transform into a fire truck rather than a search and rescue Hummer. After being changed into a Hummer, he initially still retained a red and white deco, which later served as the inspiration for Hasbro's Rescue Ratchet, redecos of the movie toys. After designs of Megatron had leaked on the internet, his head design was slightly revised following massive fan complaints. The studio had originally preferred the Transformers not to talk at all throughout the movie, a notion Hasbro heavily contested. Bumblebee still ended up being mute throughout most of the movie, which, according to ORCI and Kurtzman, was inspired by Spielberg's E.T. and is supposed to signify that his friendship with Sam transcends words. Most drafts of the script started the movie with Archibald Witwicky's discovery of Megatron. In the actual movie, this scene was moved to a later point, shown as a flashback, actually at two points, split into two parts. IDW's comic adaption of the movie still has this as the opening scene. Also in one of the early drafts, the original reason for Michaela's falling out with Trent was not because he wouldn't let his little bunny drive his car but because she refused to let him drive after having drunk beer. And Valicious Much? In an early draft, Lennox and his crew would have defeated Scorponic with a simple grenade, which would have dissolved him at a molecular level. The airstrike would have never happened, and Lennox wouldn't have established contact with the Pentagon until around the time when Sam and Michaela were apprehended by Sector 7. In the same draft, Sam had left his grandfather's glasses at school. The Autobots would have distracted a security guard while Sam and Michaela would have broken into their school. It would have been there that Sam would have learned about Michaela's criminal past, and the scene would have ended with their arrest by Sector 7. In some earlier drafts of the script, Optimus Prime was supposed to kill Barricade 2 after he had finished off Bonecrusher. That scene never made it into the final movie, and Barricade simply disappears with no explanation after Bonecrusher transforms. However, the scene still made it into Alan Dean Foster's novelization of the movie and IDW's comic adaption. Also in earlier drafts of the script, Megatron was supposed to kill Jazz by consuming his spark. Again, this is only explicitly confirmed in the novelization and IDW's comic adaption of the movie, but not in the movie itself. 